Hi there, and welcome to Not Quite Mint. And yes, I'm not on holiday, but Tom is. Uh, but I thought I'd obviously bring him along because uh, he feels weird when uh, I'm going through these keys without uh, without uh, me, uh, my wingman in Tom. Real shame. But anyway, he'll be back uh, this time next week. Uh, so make sure that you tune in. Obviously, if you're new to the channel, do make sure that you uh, obviously. Um, it's feeling quite big, actually. It's a bit intimidating there. I'm going to have to uh, shrink him down. But yeah, do make sure that uh, obviously that you do uh, come back and um, obviously subscribe to us. Hit the uh, big thumbs up like button as well. That would be absolutely fantastic. Helps us out uh, probably more than anything. We've been hovering around like that 20 likes per video mark. So if you can. Have a look, smash the like, let us get up to 20 likes on this video. That would be absolutely amazing. Also, guys, uh, where am I going? I'm going over here. So this here is uh, where you can find us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and obviously here on YouTube. Do make sure that you follow us on one of those things because uh, obviously we do uh, sort of like keep as active as we can, like bringing you uh, sort of like news around the community and things like that. So um, always, always looking to help you guys out. Uh, we are here, though, to do our keys of the week. Uh, there's quite a lot of keys. We've got, I think, about 10 in total to go through. Um, so, yeah. Also, I must apologise for being slightly late. Uh, I've been out today. I haven't been at work, and it just took me a little bit longer than expected to get uh, back home, and I just wanted to make sure that I'd got all my notes together and everything so that I wasn't uh, appearing like a complete uh, tool when I was obviously speaking to you and giving you the information that uh, that we've, uh, we've got to give you. So... Um, I'm glad that I took that time because, uh, as I say, we've got 10 keys to go through, uh, a mix of indie, Marvel, and DC, which is always uh, a really good uh, sign of a good uh, comic book week. Um, also, we will be reviewing some of these titles on our show on Thursday, whichever way you want to go. As I say, Tom isn't going to be with me, but we're going to be joined by uh, Comic D Comico Dino. Um, so thanks so much. Looking forward to speaking uh, to Dino on Thursday and getting uh, our reviews out, obviously, ahead of uh, what we were able to pick up in the shops tomorrow. Fingers crossed supplies are good this week. So we'll have uh, Marvel and DC and uh, everything else to uh, obviously bring to you. So with everything all covered, I suppose I should make uh, a start on the keys. So um, there's a couple of like kind of like notable ones that I'm not 100% certain are going to be uh, amazing uh, like long term keys. But there, if you are a fan of these comics that I'm going to mention in a little bit, uh, do uh, obviously make sure that you pick them up. So first and foremost, uh, I'm going to have to say goodbye to Tom for a little bit. Come back. Thanks, Tom. So uh, Tom's going to go away, and I'm going to bring up our first uh, sort of notable, which is this one, something I'm quite excited about. As always, it's a Star Wars title. Obviously, I am a bit of a Star Wars nerd. And, uh, yeah, uh, it's Bounty Hunters Issue 5. Uh, I haven't read Issue 4 yet, I don't believe. It was, we had a rather busy week, I think, the last uh, time Bounty Hunters came out, and I haven't read it yet, so I'm not 100% up to date. However, um, I do believe that there's been quite a few people uh, sort of speculating that there's going to be uh, quite a, a key sort of moment within this uh, book. I think Goth Gotham City Comics have got it as their key of the week, so whether they know something that we don't know. But for me, it's a great ongoing series. The art's absolutely fantastic. It's, uh, I think, Lee B uh, B Mayo, who's uh, um, who's obviously doing the art in there so uh, it's just it's just like reading the movie it's amazing it's a, it's such a great great book so uh, that's my first notable uh then we've got an indie book so not too sure about this one uh, it might be one that i enjoy i'm not sure tom uh will be uh agreeing uh with me on this one though uh sounds a little bit creepy um and uh yeah we've got basically from vault comics uh it's this book here called The um, Autumnal. So it's quite a good, obviously, time to bring uh, a book like this out. We're obviously building towards Halloween. Uh, we know it's going to be uh, slightly different than uh, in normal years, sadly. Like, little kids obviously not going to be able to probably trick or treat and all that kind of thing. But it isn't going to mean that we can miss out in terms of, like, watching horror films, sitting at home, reading, obviously, scary books and all that kind of stuff. We can still get into the spirit of Halloween and, obviously, you know, enjoy it as much as we possibly can within, uh, obviously, all the restrictions that we're going to probably be handed out to us um, before the end of October. 
So yeah, the autumnal. What's this one about? It is a new comic from uh, Vault. Um, we like our number one indies. We always like to check them out to see if they're any good. Uh, this particular one is um, well. From what I can tell, it's basically a mother and daughter. Uh, they are uh, they've been living in Chicago, but obviously life's got a little bit sort of tough for them and some bad, bad stuff's been happening. So they're moving out to sort of like a sleepy sort of uh, town in ha uh, New Hampshire. Have wrote down the name. I believe it's called Comfort Notch. Now, I haven't looked up to see if that's an actual place, but... What a name if it is probably made up, but uh, yeah, it's out in New Hampshire, so I believe that part of America in autumn it's all about like you know the beautiful gold trees and stuff like that. So it's gonna be really interesting to see this, but it does look rather, uh, rather like it's sort of like a horror kind of suspense theme sort of comic. So if that's your bag, check that out. Um, now the next one, it's a bit of a naughty one, this one is because uh, a lot of people have uh, I've seen it on uh, a lot of people's keys and it's such a great series uh we've got daredevil 22 i believe um this is a book that i am desperate to read and catch up on uh, in trade paperback form uh, i've heard absolutely fantastic reviews from it however a lot of people have been speculating on this one uh, purely because of the cover art now the cover art as you can clearly see it has this kind of like merger between uh, iron man and daredevil which is quite cool really um the thing that i'm hearing though is that it doesn't actually lead to anything actually happening in the story which is a little bit frustrating so i'm not sure what the relevance is or if it's something that's going to be uh you know building to in the future but yeah daredevil 22 really cool cover and uh, i do believe it's the first time that we've seen a sort of uh, merger of the daredevil kind of suit and the uh, and the iron man sort of kind of aesthetic as well so again it's a sort of a first cover appearance of sorts so do check it out uh, if you can um Ooh, we have got uh, we've got Dino in uh, the stream and we've got Ruben Guzman as well. How are you doing, guys? Thanks ever so much for uh, popping by and keeping me company. As I say, I've uh, obviously uh, binned off uh, binned off obviously pop up Tom, but I'll show you pop up Tom because he's on holiday. Of course, he's back next week, um, and uh, that's going to be absolutely amazing um, that to have him back. Uh, lots of things planned as well in the some books that we've got coming out that we're really excited that we've got a couple of uh, cool uh, sort of new series ideas coming up as well we're going to move on to our next sort of notable it is an indie book and this one sounds kind of really cool uh, actually oh there we go we've got gray man in as well so thanks ever so much for popping uh, in gray man that's absolutely awesome and uh, yeah dino obviously uh, flying the uh, the uk flag and supporting the uk comic community as always which is amazing everybody uh, everybody's doing really well and really enjoyed our stream with uh, rod the reek on sunday night that was uh, that was something uh, something to obviously go and check out um yeah so next book <laughs> yeah so yeah mo yeah moral support from uh the gray man yeah so uh gray man dino is going to be here with me on uh thursday so uh, tom's back next tuesday uh but dino is going to be uh coming in and uh yeah popping pop up tom is even more handsome than real tom don't tell him that that was a that was a picture of nick from uh at my wedding album that i thought was kind of summed up you know what you should be doing on holiday you know with a beer and stuff so it's just that uh, he didn't know about that so i'll probably get told off but uh hey how it's all a bit of fun um but yeah so we've got this book miles to go this one is from aftershock comics i'll be honest i'm, I'm not familiar with the aftershock um uh comics line at all um so yeah this one is it's just quite an interesting one. Obviously, we've been reading uh, recently, like sort of uh, Seven Secrets, and uh, like we had obviously Stillwater last week. All the they all sound quite in intriguing, and obviously we haven't been let down so far. So I'm quite intrigued to maybe potentially give Aftershock a quick go with this Miles to Go title. Um, this one's about a single mom who apparently is uh, sort of leading a new life as a, uh, as a as a mother to a to a younger daughter, um, and uh, but. Pre 
previously she was like some kind of like an assassin trained killer type person left that life behind obviously moved on become a mother but apparently uh because of events going on around her her daughter uh she's likely to be getting drawn back into uh sort of a, a life of violence and uh, all that nastiness so um so yeah sounds quite a cool concept quite a cool title and uh i'm you know, it might be one that if I get time to, to read, I'll, I think I might check that out. Right then, so let's get back to one of the big ones. So uh, let's have a quick look at what we've got on the next one. So the next one is going to be... Now, this one, again, is quite intriguing because it's not a title that I've been reading, but I know... I don't know if... I know Dino's a bit of a, a DC uh, buff, so I don't know if, Dino, if, if Dino's been reading uh, the Suicide Squad uh, stuff, but... I know a couple of um, issues ago, I believe we had um, some kind of a, where was it, uh, was it uh, Deadshot's daughter or something like that made a sort of a, an appearance of live shot or something like that. There was, there was some kind of, something going on with Suicide Squad that was like quite a, a key issue that a lot of people missed out on. I don't know if this issue, uh, which is issue nine of Suicide Squad, is going to have kind of a, an impact on obviously uh, what's going to happen on, but it is being billed as being the, the, the death of dead shot. So um, it's a bit of a, a bit of a, a funny one. Do, do comic characters ever, <laughs> that sounds exactly like the premise of DC's silence. <laughs> but yeah, so basically um, it's, it's going to be quite, quite interesting to see if, if dead shot is indeed killed in this uh what obviously ramifications that has with, with the suicide squad i know the suicide squad's one of those ones where you know there's a lot of characters a lot of people get killed and all the rest of it that's the general thing with it you know as far as i'm led to believe as so say not 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 having read uh, a vast uh, quantity over the years of, uh, of of Suicide Squad, but yeah, it's a it's one of those ones that's certainly worthwhile picking out, especially if you've got it on your pull list. Um, it'll be interesting to see, and if uh, it is one of those ones, uh, I'll, I might uh, I might give it a quick uh, peruse to see what actually happens. Uh, obviously, ahead of Thursday's uh, show, just to see if there's anything to note bringing to up with you guys. Yeah, so Dino says. Does that make him dead, dead shot? Um, and I guess it does uh, in many ways. So, yeah, we'll have a dead, dead shot uh, in, uh, in that issue. So we'll have to uh, we'll have to definitely see how that goes because it sounds quite, uh, it sounds, you know, a death a death's always funny in comics, isn't it? You can, nobody ever stays dead for too long. But, yeah, it, with that introduction of his uh, his daughter a couple of issues ago, it's, uh, it's one of those interesting ones. Yeah, so, yeah, shot, dead shot, yeah. Shot, shot dead dead shot unless you get stabbed that's a good point that's that might be an, a thing gray man we might have to see if he gets see how see how he meets his end uh but uh yeah i'll, I'll i might check that out i might check it out so uh moving on now this one is one that i'm kind of excited about and i, I do intend to review this if it's any good uh if it makes our top five we'll uh, definitely make uh, some kind of a a proper going over of this me and dino but uh, this is basically uh, it's a one shot uh the immortal she hulk um believe it is being written by al ewing which is obviously important because of the immortal hulk uh, that he he writes and obviously he did obviously write uh, empire along with dan slot now if you've watched any of our uh, recent sort of review shows um about empire the main series has has been a little bit disappointing to say the least we weren't too uh, sort of made up about that and i think in general a lot of the comic community have really been let down by empire as a as a as a sort of event. Uh, I don't know if that was adversely affected by the whole thing that they had to cut down on a lot of the times and things like that. I don't know if that's had any impact. So like maybe the story scene didn't quite gel together, right? It didn't really have, have much uh, magnitude. And in actual fact, all of the one shots that they did around the main story of Empire was way, way better than the actual six part <laughs> sort of story, story arc of Empire. So I'm hoping uh, that uh, this story, um, uh, the Immortal She-Hulk, is going to tie up all of the loose ends because, again, not wanting to do spoilers if you haven't read Empire, but I wouldn't recommend reading it anyway. But it was billed in, uh, I think it was issue four, so that basically it was going to be the death of She-Hulk. Now, a lot of people debated that because I think it was in Civil War 
I want to say either issue two or issue four, uh, Civil War two, issue two or issue four. I believe um, we had, we had the death of She Hulk in that, and it was ultimately teased of uh, you know sort of like she had the look of an immortal She Hulk in that issue as well. So there was like a, a level of resurrection, and I know it's something that's being dealt with in uh, obviously the Immortal Hulk about the fact that all these gamma irradiated uh, people. Um, once they're in, you know, that kind of universe and everything, and they've got the gamma effect, that they actually are immortal. They they all become immortal. So I think like Doc Samson's the same. We've got this um, Doc Fry. Uh, there's a couple of other characters who 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 are sort of like you know, it's all about. I think there's like this Green Door or something like that. As I say, I'm not fully up to date with Immortal Hulk, but yeah, it's it's. It's interesting how it's all coming together. Anyway, Immortal She-Hulk. Hopefully we'll get all the bits sort of um, tied up. Um, having a look out here. Um, yeah, so Grayman's there. Deadshot's kid has been changed so often that she's a grown woman now by any chance. Yeah, she's quite old, actually, yeah. First, oh dear. So, yeah, he has actually killed his own kid yet. And uh, Dino says, yeah, ordered the gorgeous Alex Ross cover. So, uh, yeah, there's, I think, I think that's right. There's a, there's obviously a load of these timeless variants coming out as well on, on a lot of this week's comics. Um, keep an eye open for them because they're fantastic. Like the Alex Ross artwork on there is absolutely fantastic. But, um, yeah, I'm interested to see what happens because obviously in the main uh, Empire run, She Hulk effectively died in issue four but then she was kind of like taken over by a, a katati host that had apparently been a, like sort of influencing her for a period of time pre prior to issue four and then she ends up having a big fight with thing and then um she overcomes this thing that uh, this katati sort of thing that's got into her <laughs> that sounds really dodgy that's actually sort of like a parasitic thing fights that off and then she's back alive again by the end of Empire. So I'm hoping that because this is a kind of Empire tie-in, that we'll get some kind of um, explanation of, uh, of of how how this you know what the significance is uh, going on. Obviously with uh, She-Hulk. So let's see what Graham's got to say. No, only only our Marvel before the nineties. I so yeah, he's, uh, <laughs> yeah. We're, we're talking about Grey Man's collecting. Oh my word! I tell you what, Grey Man, your collection on your bloggy bloggy blogs. Every time I uh, check that up, it's absolutely bonkers. But yeah, I do agree. I'm very. I'm always having the battle with uh, where do I actually begin my collecting and where do I end it? Because as I say, I always start something before I realise how expensive all the keys are. And that's it. I mean, that's why I'm kind of, you know, me and Tom do this video is so that we're up to date with what keys are coming out because it's horrible when you miss out on something that you really enjoy that's actually good. And um, do you know what I mean? It's uh, that that's you know why we like to keep up to date with uh, with obviously the uh, the current keys so we don't have to buy them when we're old and decrepit, whenever that may well be. But um, so that's Immortal She Hulk. It's the fifth. Uh, book that I've got obviously uh, on our uh, on our list, although we've got four more to go, so it's number five on the list. The next one is quite a good one. Now, no, Tom is very excited about this one. Uh, definitely, one hundred percent. It's something that I think um, definitely, definitely. Um, if we uh, with this um, this juggernaut run. I've got a sneaky suspicion it's going to be more important than a lot of people maybe are anticipating. Um, I know it's going to have some kind of tie-in, I believe, with the X of Sword stuff uh, and the whole, like, mutant world going on. As I say, Tom will probably know more about that, but I think it will become quite apparent once I've read this, uh, obviously, to see um, what the... Uh, what the what the crack is now the other reason why this is and this is only something that's came out i think within probably the last like week or so there is a key first appearance that's going to be in this book which is kind of why it's like pushed it pushed it up into the uh, the top five but basically it's a, a character it's going to be the first appearance of a character i believe called d cell so the uh ability of this d cell character is basically they're able to uh suppress kinetic energy which is obviously going to be relevant with Juggernaut, um, 
and I think is it Cannonball of the New Mutants and stuff like that who use this kind of, you know, like the uh, the momentum built up through kinetic energy and all that kind of stuff to obviously become these like human battering rams. So it's going to be interesting to see obviously how that affects Juggernaut. And again, I believe there's going to be like a tie-in obviously with this whole uh, mutanty kind of things as well. So so that's uh, Juggernaut number four on the list. Now we've got. Um, Three more to go through. These are by far, for me, the most ex exciting books that we've got to. Uh, I'm looking forward to to, to actually reading this uh, this week. So number three on the list uh, is going to be. Let me bring it up. I think it is going to be this one. So sorry, I've actually got four books left to go. I've completely lost count. Um, is this one so this again is another one shot it's dark knights death metal speed metal what can i say about this so uh this is again it's a it's sort of like a bit of a spin-off issue off of the main uh death metal books again the one shots of of, of of death metal have been really really good we had uh was it trinity crisis a couple of weeks ago really really solid book really great really tied in uh to this whole death metal storyline they're doing a really really good job i think with death metal person it's really exciting entertaining and uh this is obviously going to be speed metal now speed metal um this picks up basically on this whole concept that uh, there's the crisis energy that's been obviously uh, mixed around uh, the three different crises uh, within um the sort of like the multiverse uh and it's been i think dra being drained from obviously like users of the speed force so the speed family have been sent off on a mission to basically basically try and re-harness uh, obviously all this crisis energy deploy it away from perpetua so that they can use it against obviously all the bad guys effectively and that's where trinity crisis you had um superman wonder woman uh and they were all shooting off obviously trying to solve their own crises to again sort of unify everybody on uh, on this front now in this you've got obviously your speed force users obviously your Barry allens and all the rest of it running around being chased by the lightning knights now I have a feeling we saw a hint of the Lightning Knights in the previous issue, but I don't know again whether that's going to be uh, made more apparent and this would be become more of a, a first appearance. So it's it's something that's going to be interesting. I knew Graham Man would have something to say about the, the use of this title. Speed metal, yeah, cultural appropriation of my music indeed. But uh, yeah, I... I, I, I yeah, I, I, the, the parallels they're making with uh, obviously death metal, speed metal, and all the rest of it. I don't know. Who knows what's going on? But yeah, and what have we got? We've got uh, obviously the met, yeah, Dino's set, see, with Juggernaut, Gambit charges objects with kinetic charges. So there's there you go. So that's going to have um, some kind of impact with uh, obviously D cell as well. So so that's pretty damn good. So um, yeah, Speedball. Quicksilver, yeah. So that's what I say. So I, I think this new D cell character again could affect quite a few of the uh, characters, and I think again because the Juggernaut thing is going to have obviously links in with uh, the mutant whole stuff. I think yeah, it's, it's going to be really interesting to see how that that sort of uh, plans out. Back to speed metal though, yeah. It, it's basically we're going to be going. This is I think we're moving towards issue five of um, Death Metal. And, uh, yeah, we, we're kind of coming to the end of, obviously, the journey with everything. And hopefully, um, obviously, sort of, uh, we, we, I don't know, we'll get some some more interesting answers. Although a lot of the one-shots have been leaving things really on a big sort of like uh, cliff edge, uh, a bit of a cliffhanger, uh, if I'm honest. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how that uh, this issue obviously turns out. Right, we do have three more left to go, so I will shuffle on through these <laughs> as best as I can. Um, so where is the thumbnail for oh, the overlay? I think it's this one. No, not that one. <clears throat> it's this one. No, it's not this one. <laughs> I'm totally failing here. It's not even that one. It is here somewhere. Um, or is it? Oh, no. So I, I don't know. It's not, I, I don't think I've got an overlay for this one. Um, so... It's Fantastic Four Antithesis. Um, 
now or antithesis now <laughs> i'm good that I, I swear i had a thumbnail for this one or an overlay but uh, anyway that one i'm really excited for it's so high on my list um that basically due to the fact that uh, we are going to have uh, the first appearance of antithesis um now this is a character who is supposedly the direct opposite of galactus um and Whilst this antithesis story is not being tied in directly with um, sort of like the main sort of continuity of Fantastic Four at the moment, I don't believe, because this story appears to be slightly out of continuity. You've got Franklin and Valeria who slight, appear slightly younger, uh, well, I say slightly younger, their children in this uh, in, in issue one. So in issue two, it's going to be quite interesting to see what antithesis, antithesis is um, and uh, exactly what it is. We've seen some cover art because we've obviously were told at the end of uh, issue one that Galactus is dead. Um, again, a bit ironic when you consider what obviously has happened in obviously the Thor run. Um, so um, it's it's a bit confusing whether they'll actually tie all these uh, these sort of storylines together or or not. I'm not too sure, but yeah, Fantastic Four antithesis. Don't miss out on that. There's also a really fantastic Alex Ross uh, timeless cover for that with the Silver Surfer on. So as I say, do check that out. So oh, we've got uh, Comic Tom UK. Funnily enough, <laughs> so how you doing, Tom? Thanks. Ever so much for popping in. That's absolutely fantastic. So yeah, this is that's that's what Grayman's saying about uh, the opposite of Galactus. Does he vomit out planets? Well, exactly. There's, you've got a destroyer, and the opposite you would anticipate would be some kind of like creator. So with everything that's going on with Venom and the arrival of Null and what's going on in the King in Black and all that kind of stuff, I wouldn't put it past. Um, and Thor, of course. I wouldn't put it past there being some kind of a link from this antithesis story into like the main kind of uh, continuity. But I'm not 100% certain. It'd be cool if they did, though. There you go, yeah. Poop, poop the planets into existence. That would be a really unfortunate sight to see. <laughs> So not great at all. Right. Anyway, so we have got two more left on the on the list. And uh, this is going to be quite interesting. It's not that one. I've got all oh, they, they look really similar because I've got the blue heading. So we're going to talk a little bit about X of Swords creation. Again, this is something that I know uh, by, have, by having like a couple of obviously guests on the channel and stuff like that, uh, like Ben Crampton at me, Tom, and Ben are really, really hyped for this X of Swords event. I've ordered every single part of this uh, sort of um, this storyline to get me into the whole Dawn of X X titles thing. So I'm pretty, pretty up to date. I'm pretty clear on what's happening. Uh, but this is where it all starts. This is part one of X of Swords. It's called X of Swords Creation. And, yeah, I'm really excited. I can't talk a great deal for it, apart from the fact that it's all about these divisions of, um, that obviously, that are existing within the mutant sort of um, world or, you know, with uh, Krakoa. And, uh, and, and you've got, like... I forget the name of it. It's something like a, a Roka or something like that, which is like this sort of other part of um, of the uh, of the, the 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 whole like X Men sort of islands and things like that. And you've got effectively Apocalypse and his sort of um, supporters. Effectively, they're going to be, you know, trying to. They're going to obviously have a big fight or whatever because that's what I, th I think I've been saying. That's what a lot of like mutants have been doing um, in, in in every in every X Men title. I seem to have read it's uh, a bit a little bit bonkers. So um, <laughs> so yeah, we've got basically uh, obviously yeah <laughs> the Ten of Swords like the uh, the tarot card. So I'm not sure it has got any connotations with tarot, but I do know that. Uh, uh, like they're having magic obviously feature quite uh, heavily on a lot of like the covers through this and it is going to be all encompassing so you're going to have like multiple parts occurring um in different x-men books so all of the x titles over the next six or seven weeks i think it is so but it's around about two months this event's going to last for um basically 
every single X title is going to be tying in or part of this main story of um, the X of Swords. So really exciting event. And I hope it's better than Empire because otherwise I, I might have to give up because there's going to be, I think I think there's about 20 parts uh, that are going to be playing into this uh, X of Swords event. So it, it better be good. It better be good for the the, the, the time investment that uh, we're going in, in for it. And yeah, as, as Dino says down here, obviously can't wait uh, for X of Swords. Really looking forward to reading it. It's going to be a really good, uh, for me, I've wanted to get into the Dawn of X titles uh, properly because I hadn't, uh, I bought all of the House of X and Powers of Ten uh, titles and um, they're sat and they've never been read. Tom Tom keeps on threatening to leave, lend me his, uh, his collected edition, but I, have, I just haven't got around to uh, reading it yet. Um, just so everybody knows, um, we got Comic Tom UK. Um, he, yeah, he's basically going to be a newcomer to the UK uh, community. Do make sure you go and obviously sub him up. He's uh, going to be uh, sorting himself out and uh, obviously bringing some content to his channel, which is going to be really cool to see. But yeah, it's going to be good to good to move things on just uh, from obviously being Dino's mate, making guest appearances on uh, on uh, on the Sunday show to uh, actually seeing what uh, Tom can bring to the community himself. So looking forward to that massively um yeah so all right okay cool yeah yeah in tarot the ten of swords can represent betrayal i like it i like it and dino agrees with that uh, with gray man that that's a good point i hadn't really thought about the symbology of it all but it does make sense because the the for the x titles that i have read um they do I, i've always i'm literally you know, you you thought X Men. You know they're going to go to Krakoa, and it's all going to be nice and peaceful. They're going to get on and everything. Every time I read an X title, they're always fighting themselves each amongst themselves, which is just like you know. I'm like, oh my god, can't they just get along? So if they're not disagreeing with obviously mutant hating humans, they're disagreeing with each other. So. But it is obviously, you know, they've got like villains. You know, we've got Omega Red and stuff like that. Obviously, leaving on Krakoa now and. You know, everybody's trying to get along, and it, it's clearly just like a recipe for disaster. But this, uh, as I say, X of Swords, I think is going to deal deal it out quite quite nicely. I I hope so. Um, we're on to the final book now. This is probably the most hyped book at the moment, and I do apologise very very much for um, uh, certainly to Dino. Now again, I have not got an overlay for this, which is really really weird. So um, it is Venom twenty eight. Um, so I do apologise again. I haven't actually got the uh, overlay for this, and I don't know why. So that's really strange. So um, anyway, it's Venom twenty eight, guys. So see, this is next part in uh, the Donny Cates run. I'm gonna bring up. Uh, I'm gonna bring Tom back. Tom's going to come back in there because yeah, he's, he's on holiday. But, um, yeah, Venom 28, guys. Um, it's going to be a big issue this is. Now, it's a real shame because there have been a lot of spoilers put out on social media around this particular um, issue. And, um, yeah, no problem, Tom. That's absolutely no problem for the shout out. But, yeah, so there's been a lot of spoilers put out with Venom 28. And... Uh, it's, I'm not going to spoil them for anybody because anybody who hasn't obviously read the spoilers, they're going to have a real, real treat for what's going to happen. It is a very important issue, I would believe, uh, uh, definitely, you know, in terms of going forward uh, and understanding uh, this this virus character and what, uh, and Codex as well, who's been obviously introduced. Um, it's going to be really important. We're going to Try not to do too many spoilers, I think, when we do our review on Thursday. But it's going to be really, really hard because I really do think that a lot of the uh, the content of that story uh, for Venom 28 is going to be around the reveals that we're going to get uh, within that issue. So no one needs to spoil it too much. I'm going to just uh, pretty much leave it there. But I think that's the, mo the book that I'm most excited for um, me, myself personally, because obviously being, you know, sort of Spidey and Venom fan, it's, um, that for me is, is the book that I'm most looking forward to. And, uh, and Dino will be happy to know as well that I will allow him to say Donny Cates on our show, because I think he'd find it really hard 
or uh, he'd have he'd, he'd really have to owe a lot to his uh, his <laughs> his comic Dino swear jar basically. So uh, if anybody hasn't watched Dino's channel, do go and check it out. Um, the same with Grey Man as well. Do go and check those those uh, you know. Let's grow the UK comic community as much as we can. But Dino, yeah, he, he's not. He, every time he says the word Donny Cates, he has to put a pound in uh, in a, in his uh, Donny Cates swear jar. So yeah, it, it's all going to be safe, my man. If, <laughs> it's all going to be safe on Thursday. We are a Donny Cates friendly and free zone, so uh, yeah, we are uh, we are enjoying all the Donny Cates stuff. So that's uh, really really good. I'm finished. I'm really sorry, guys, that I ran out of um, of the overlays. I do not know what's happened there. I thought I'd got them all loaded up, but uh, there's obviously more books um, more books to talk about than uh, what I got overlays, which is a bit of a shame. Anyway um on that note obviously tom he's gonna go off now because he want, he needs to go and enjoy himself and have another beer um so i'm gonna take you over for the end bit so make sure that you subscribe to our channel uh smash that like button as i say if we could get it over 20 likes that would be amazing um give us a comment uh down below if you could do uh let, let us know what books you're looking forward to reading most uh this week uh always interested to find that kind of stuff out um <laughs> Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Payday is until Friday. Oh, Dino. Bad times, bad times. So, yeah. And uh, Gray Man's just saying that uh, GP Venom, another UK YouTuber, is about to, he's obviously streaming as well. So, I'm going to skidaddle off and uh, allow you guys, anybody who's watching, anybody who's watched this, to go and check out GP Venom's uh, theme, uh, stream even. Uh, but, yeah. Thanks ever so much for watching, guys. Make sure you sub, make sure you like. I'm going to tell you to go and take care. Uh, and in the spirit of Tommy, I will say, see ya.